not wheezing nearly as much as I used to. No white spirit fumes, no resin. No super glue fumes. That's right. I have ah. Oof. That's right. I've got a studio now. Oof. Lovely, lovely workspace. It is near perfect. All except for that space right there. Foreshadowing. I'm sure there will be some kind of callback to that intro later on in the episode. Hello, welcome to another episode of crafting with Dan does uh, today's episode was inspired by this this has been sitting on my shelf for a good long while I like the shape of it it's relatively simple and it smells bloody lovely oh, oh I've gone in and held the wrapper off of the thing there look at that um, I need to get the lid off so uh, first things first Come on, Dan. It's embarrassing. There's literally dozens of people watching you right Oh, you got it. Good job, Dan. Now, I put the lid back on, but I make sure it's super glued because that lid needs to be tighter. That lid was not nearly tight enough. And for its insolence, it gets a good old sanding all over with a sanding sponge. You would have seen the thumbnail, so you would have seen what this thing becomes. But at this point, I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to start with some legs. And for that, I'm going to use some junk pot pieces. Uh, these two junk pot pieces right here. Now, look at this lovely new tool that was kindly purchased for me by uh, Rich. You know who you are, Rich. Holding it the right way out, we can see that it is an Arrow Max. 29. Uh, no longer will I have blisters or calluses on the palms of my hand with a manual drill. I'll use this thing. I mean, I'll still have the calluses, but that's from the other thing I do. So here we are while I was blathering on. Uh, made a hip joint for both of these thighs using some wire. And on each of the joints, I'm attaching some little wheels from a tank kit. Do love a tank kit, me. My elderly finger is pointing out some little features I've added in between shots. Now, I can't show every single thing or this video would be two hours instead of the usual 90 minutes. This plastic tube is from a receipt roll from my sweet shop. If you don't own a sweet shop, go into a sweet shop and ask the pleasant person behind the counter. Do you have any receipt rolls? Uh, they will of course tell you to fuck off. I mean, that's what I would and do do. Do do. I folded and bought a bag of cake pop sticks because I was sick of eating lollipops just to get the sticks. I didn't want the lollipops. I just wanted the sticks, but you can't just chuck them away. There are children out there desperate for lollipops. And here I am eating lollies by the fistful with a grimace on my face. Also, these are some wires for sugar flowers. Why straighten your wires when you can buy them already straight for a couple of pounds? I thread the sugar wires inside the cake pop uh, sticks for added rigidity. Now, the legs I'm doing now are the back legs. They're going to be the short stubby legs. Uh, but I'm going to use these pumpkin decorations for feet. I've had these for ages, these white teeth that you thread into pumpkins uh, and finally the day has come all that hoarding is paying off one project at a time I mean let's overlook the fact that I probably accumulated a hell of a lot more stuff in the time it's taken me to make this video this little box that I'd lost for ages and I've only just recently found is full of little loops that you use for jewelry making which are quite handy for little finer details like slotting them onto a pumpkin tooth 
That was one of the suggestions on the back of the packet, by the way. And now it's time to break out the plastic card and just add a few panels here and there. No EVA foam this time. The scale I'm going for, I want thinner sheets of metal, so I've gone for plastic card. It's time to uh, build up the front shoulders for the front arms using these little black wheels that I believe are from Kinex, uh, the old toy that I got instead of Lego, and I really wanted Lego. Also, these little blue things are from uh, the bubble wands, I think. Uh, you know, the things you dip into washing up liquid and blow bubbles and uh, a couple of wooden round beads slotting into place. Oh, and to cap it off, a couple of uh, googly eyes. Now it's time to break out my secret weapon for the front legs, which are gonna be quite large. Uh, I've got this flick and lick, flick and lick. I don't know whether it's instructions or just good advice. Now I had to steal this flick and lick from my own sweet shop. Some people dream of being astronauts. Others dream of being Hollywood superstars. While my dream is to be completely beholden to you for the price of a lollipop. Now buy something or f off. You know, people have said that to me, that this must be a dream of yours. Hand over the bag, you swinging cat, real cool like. Uh, I've dismantled the, uh, the flick and lick and uh, have put in a tube and some wires and reinforcing the big tube with a big wire because these are going to need to support most of the weight. Now because this build is uh, some kind of giant uh, robotic bat, these front arms are the big feature pretty much. So I wanted to get these done first before I did any of the details on the body or the head or anything else. I had to get these done because they were going to be a chore and I knew it. As I said before, I'm not going to go through every single step, like the odd detail that you might see appearing, and you'll be watching and be like, oh, where'd that come from? We didn't show him making that. We can't show every step. I say we, it's me. I don't want to show every step. These videos are hard enough to make. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. I love you all. Apart from you, you know who you are. You know, this stop motion is quite arduous, it's quite difficult. And uh, watching this back as I do the voiceover, I'm realizing that it's completely pointless. I don't know why I made those little bits of styrene move. What was the point? Uh, if just one person out there appreciates it, then it's not worth it. I want like seven, eight people to appreciate it. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Anyway, those bits of styrene are there to add to these little bits of junk box that you might have just noticed I cut up. This is the first knee, I think. I think the front arms have uh, two, three, four joints? Yeah, I think four joints sounds about right. Now imagine a bat walking on its wings and legs, but doesn't have wings, just has the bones of the wings. That's what I'm going for here. So I mean, these, these are a chore, these front arms, but they look all right in the end. Using some more of those Halloween teeth, this time going for the bigger teeth, drilling holes in them, slotting them in. Everything is wired in for rigidity and strength. Uh, because I learned a lesson, I don't know if you saw the video, uh, Polly, one of these mutant cyborg kaiju things that this is supposed to be part of, uh, but I didn't consider how heavy the model was when I put the legs on it. So it had a, it had to have a base. Uh, otherwise it would have toppled over. Like a drunk grandma at a, at a wedding. Here manifesting before your very eyes is a selection of the things I use for detail. Uh, we've got tiny little circle bead things, tiny things. Plastic coated paper clips, spherical beads, uh, and uh, some random model pieces. I think they're from tank kits and stuff like that. And uh, this is the final result of all the details. Just on the legs, just on the legs. Body's next. Got the legs done, thank God. Phew. Also, this bat was too wide for my turntable, so I've used a sheet of uh, stickers. 
that I handed out at this year's Salute Expo. And uh, if I met any of you that are watching this now, uh, hello again. I hope I didn't come across as too much of a douche. Now this old hunk of plastic is a medicine manager that I purchased from the pound shop for a pound. And I thought, these lids look like great panelling, but which do I use? Everybody takes Saturday off. Who needs tablets on Saturday? Now I need to give this thing a good old sand and uh, what better to use than my hot pink now files. I'll be honest, I picked these up because of the colour. Can't tell you how sick I am of drab emery boards. Now I placed that medicine manager lid on the bottom. Not much detail on the bottom because you won't see it, but I know it's there. Now it's time to work on the top, which I've been looking forward to doing the top. I like the small details like this because this thing has a shape. It's got its silhouette now. So now it's just the fine tuning, starting with these brilliant keyboard keys. Look how flat they are. Oh, I'm gonna miss these keys when I've used them all up. I've already used a couple of these keys as little flappy bits on the shoulders and elbow joints of the arms. I should never go straight into recording voiceover after I've just run up the stairs. You really are a 40 year old man, Dan. Hello. Um, I did sort of have it in mind that when I got my own sort of studio space that I would do a, bit, a few more pieces to camera, which is what I'm doing now. Sort of at the halfway stage with this little thing, this little bat bot. Now, you didn't see me add these little struts here. Maybe I'll show a close up of them. Probably not. Uh, these, I imagine these huge legs would need extra support. I've got those tiny little struts there. These legs were the bulk, these were the big hard things, these legs. I knew they would be. That's why I thought I'd do them first. Get them out of the way. And then I can concentrate on the fun stuff. But now I'm just knackered. That's tired to uh, anyone else in the world. Let me know if you want more pieces to camera. You know, it's nice uh, for you all to sort of realise that there is a human, there's a human being there. I mean, I don't think you even see my hands these days. You might see the occasional, but there is a human being there behind the camera who uh, yearns for your affection. Leave a comment if you'd like these bits in. Maybe like halfway stage little sort of catch up things. And uh, if you do, I keep doing it. See you later. I don't know about you, but I couldn't stop staring at his cowlick on the back of his head. Now, this piece is from a kid's toy. Um, it's like a model kit for kids found in a charity shop. Sticking this on the back via suction power. And then I've added two more receipt roll tubes on the back. You don't know what these are for yet, although you've seen it in the thumbnail. Now that's pretty much all the detail done on top. We need you to turn around, little fella. Get a look at that juicy rump of yours. Oh, you cheeky boy. Now that white dot in the middle looks a bit like a butthole. So I'm going to cover that up with some styrene. Sharpish. And then using some more pieces from that kids toy model making set from the charity shop, I'm going to select this bit that looks a bit like a car bonnet. It probably is a car bonnet. And uh, stick that to his butt. Now it's nice to throw in some details in a build like this uh, that sort of give uh, some insight into the scowl of the thing. So I'm making some kind of, uh, it looks like a fire extinguisher, but a gas canister that I'm going to attach to its back and then pipe that, that gas canister thing in with a, a bit of guitar string. Don't ask me what this canister is for. For all we know, it's for bat poop. That guitar, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's early. That guitar string wire has got me hankering for some more. So I'm gonna use some conduit wire from the back to the butt. I don't know what the function of all these things are. Perhaps you could uh, decide for yourself. What could possibly be going from his butt to his back? 
or from his back to his butt, I suppose. Uh, it is time to do some riveting, some riveting rivet entertainment for you all. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do too much of this because it's tedious work. But here we go. And of course, I shall be using the art shiv for this. Now, just to get it straight, it's not tedious applying the rivets. It's tedious having to cut around each individual rivet being placed. But it's mandatory at this point. That's all you're getting. Uh, despite what some of you in the comments might think, this is not Bill making stuff. Now, I have been looking forward to this for a long old time. It's time to prime this thing. So I'll take it outside, give it a spray of black. Lovely. It all comes together, no more garish colours. Now, because this is a new studio that is presently pretty bloody clean and pristine, and uh, I'm still very much in love with it, I'm going to flip this mat over to the grey side. I don't like the aesthetic of the grey mat, but I'm going to paint on the grey mat because I don't want paint on the black side, which is the presentation side. So uh, once I've flipped that, then we give it a nice coat of burnt sienna. Rotate a little bit more. And then an overbrush with uh, gunmetal. I'm hearing, my, hearing in my ear that it's gunmetal. Thanks, Jim. And now it's time for the painting stage. Painting. Painting. All right, here we go. Uh, I want to paint this thing yellow, like a JCB or a JC bat, as one of my patrons call it. Very clever that. Uh, when you paint things yellow, uh, don't go for actual yellow. I've gone for ochre brown. And believe me, this took many, many coats. Yellow is a nightmare. But it looks good in the end, eventually, a couple of days later. See, that's already looking quite nice. Uh, and continuing on with the JC Bat theme, I'm going to add some, uh, what I originally think is going to be dark grey pieces, but I end up going for black, so ignore this paint pot as it arrives now. It is a lie. I use this dark grey for the pipes, but I use black for the joints. You'll see it in a minute. Usually when I paint something like this, I leave little gaps in the paintwork to look like chips and things, but because this yellow was so bad, I had to cover the entire thing. And now I'm gonna add the chips manually with uh, some gun metal uh, over the top. And uh, once those chips are added in, I'm going to highlight the edges and uh, put a bit of shadow along the top. The usual trick, just to make the chips look more 3D. Now, don't often like to talk about the painting process while painting. Some of you viewers may be new. Uh, some of you may have been with the channel for a while, but this is part of the MCK series. What a terrible name, Mutant Cyborg Kaiju. I haven't thought of a proper name for them yet, but this is a placeholder. So there was Polly, the, the mutated parrot cyborg. There was a uh, slug, just called slug. It was a mutated slug cyborg. This is, uh, we'll, we'll call it JC Bat. Um, the mutant cyborg bat. These are all part of a series. There will be some kind of story eventually. There'll be some kind of reason for them all, but at the minute they just all look great together and I'll show you them together at the end. Nice and colorful, especially for me. That is pretty much all the painting needed for the bodywork. I have uh, highlighted some of the metallic edges with a lighter silver and added a few bits of red in for the wires and things like that. Uh, but that's it for the painting of the chassis. The chassis, as it's spelt. And now it's time to pot something in this big hole. Uh, if I have received a pound for every time I'd heard that. And this is the sculpting stage. Sculpting. Sculpting. This is my big box of 
clay. All of my polymer clays are in here, all the little offcuts and things. I think this box is quite airtight. I found this in a charity shop uh, and a lot of this clay is holding up quite well. I mean, some of it has gone a bit hard and therefore needs a good kneading with some Vaseline. The clay is well and truly kneaded. Now going through the usual motions when sculpting something, going to uh, use a kitchen foil, alum aluminum foil, aluminium foil, uh, to bulk out the, the middle and use a bit of armature wire to strengthen the thing. Now when you have your most cost efficient shape, you're going to take out some Super Sculpey Bake and Bond, Bake and Bond, not Bake and Bond, and cover the thing, ready to cover the foil in clay. I haven't sculpted in a little while, but I really enjoyed doing it again. Now I've got a homemade texture roller, which is just a bit of clay on a stick that has little uh, divots and pop marks in it. Use that, and I'm using this on every stage of this before I bake it, just to make sure anything that shows through is textured. Now oh, come on Dan, that is a terrible shot. This contraption is an air fryer. It's a small one from Amazon. It was purchased for me by one of my patrons on my Amazon wish list. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's great for baking clay at your table. You don't have to leave your room anymore. You can bake it right there where you sit. I mean, it's not big enough for a gammon joint or something, but it's perfect for little bits of clay. So it's perfect for me. If I can just remember how to work this bloody thing, it's been a while. I find that 135 degrees but, uh, for about 15 minutes works for most of the pieces that I put in there. It depends on the size, obviously. That is 135 degrees English. I don't know what it is uh, in those other temperatures. Why can't we all just have the same things? For the record, I'm not a communist. That sounded a little bit like a statement a communist would make. I am not a communist. Now I made sure that the neck fit into the hole and uh, made sure I didn't touch that area again when I baked the rest. Now bats, I think bats are cute, um, even though they're ugly. But for this bat I'm going to focus on the ugly. Uh, we're going to start by giving it a nice goiter, some nice neck fat rolls underneath. And whenever I do a monster face or a face in general, when I'm building it up in layers, so I do the gums first before I do the lips or any other feature. And before I bake the gums, I poke in some teeth that I made with the translucent clay, the Fimo stuff. This bat is going to be a whole mess of teeth. I'm going to put teeth everywhere. I'm going to put teeth on its teeth. Well, I won't go that far, but you'll see what I mean. Whenever I use this clay for teeth, I always hope to keep the translucency when I paint the thing, but I'm pretty sure, looking at this, I'm not going to be able to paint around those teeth. So those teeth are going to get painted. It's unfortunate, but I know it's going to happen. I mean, I know it happened, but at this point I'm knowing that it's going to happen. There's a common phrase, as blind as a bat, uh, but not this bat. I'm going to give this bat a lovely set of googly eyes. Hiya! Not really. I didn't even put these eyes for comical effect. It just happened. I need these things here for later on. You'll see why. They're not eyes. This bat is blind. I've given this bat a lip and added more teeth to the lip. Look at this. Ah! You little shit! How dare you! How ruddy dare you? Mmm, that's what you get. He doesn't have any eyes. Uh, spoilers, he doesn't have any ears, but he does have a big old nose. And because the nose is going to be quite flimsy, I'm using cos clay for this. Cos clay is flexible when baked, so this thing shouldn't snap. Should be pretty uh, durable. 
Now the thing I found with cosplay as opposed to super sculpty, super sculpty is much easier um, to sculpt small details. It's, uh, it's, it's firmer. Firm is the word I'm looking for. But I think when I'm making a nose that is clearly quite yonic, I don't think when anybody thinks yonic they think neatness. That's just my opinion. Remember Yonic the Hedgehog? He was great. Anyway, I've reattached the googly eyes. Now, remember a while back, I uh, stuck a couple of receipt roll tubes on the back of this bot. Well, it was for these. I'm gonna make a couple of limbs that are poking out. These might have been part of the towel or the wing. I don't know what it is, but this thing is a mutant, so it could be whatever I want it to be. These legs are baked, so I'm going to take out the art shiv and this metal scriber and they are going to scratch the crap out of the, the thorny spiky part of the, uh, the limb. Settle down you two. Now I've tried sculpting these grooves and cracks into horns and claws and things but I find that this is a much more realistic effect. I mean, these are how this is how these things get scratched up and uh, beaten up in the first place by getting rubbed against things. That's how I get beaten up by rubbing against things. My God, it's been a bit sordid this episode. I do apologise, and I'd just like to thank my guest writer Benny Hill. Thanks, Benny. Don't call us; we'll call you. I've painted this bat face white because I want to use some speed paint. Speed paints, um, well this is the first series of speed paints. Army Painter, if you're listening, I'd love the next set. Drop me a line, yeah? But these ones do reactivate with water, which is not great sometimes, but when you want to blend colours, which is what I'm hoping to do on this fleshy bat thing, it works pretty well. Who am I kidding? Nobody from Army Painter is washing this. Now you may have just noticed that I'm using a Poppet, one of the fidget toy craze things, as a paint palette. A great idea, you can just pop the paint out when it's dry. Thank you, Beth. Beth's my daughter, by the way, she gave that to me. She did come round again recently, saw the Poppet and said, that's mine, I want it back. I said, no, you can't, you gave it to me. And she looked at me like she would never love me again. I still kept it. You need to be firm. There I go painting the teeth. I did say I'll end up having to paint these teeth. But you know what? It's fine. Bat's teeth are particularly filthy. Or at least that's the impression I got from uh, a little shop of horrors when the dentist showed that picture of the bat's teeth. Them's looking a bit too pearly white for my liking. So I added um, a few washes. Uh, sepia and umber wash, I think. And a bit of yellow in places. And just to make these gums, the nose and the teeth look extra gross, I'm going to use some UV resin. Get that slathered on and then it was actually quite sunny so I put it on the garden to dry. Not dry, cure. There's a difference. You know, I think I ruin a brush every time I use UV resin. No matter how much you try to clean that brush, the resin stays in the bristles and dries. Cures, sorry, cures. <laughs> Right, so those googly eyes, I've painted silver and attached wires to them, so it's just some armature wire to connect to the body. It's a, it's a feature. Now this thing's ready to be attached to the, uh, the carapace, the mechanical carapace, whatever you want to call it, the body. All of these bits are gonna go in right now. And this thing isn't finished. There's one more thing I need to add. Uh, but before I do, I want to linger on this shot for a little while just to thank the patrons because it is thanks to you patrons that it's no longer the dark times anymore. Want to speak to sexy young crafters in your area? Then come to Craft Chat! Ugh. Anything to put bread in my mouth and a paintbrush in my hand back then. Anyway, a big welcome to our brand new patrons. You surprise me, you really do. Thank you so much to Tuesday, B. Smith, Josh P, Richard Headley, Amy Pendergrass, Z, or Z, and RD. Thank you so much for joining uh, my lovely patrons. A big thanks to my Do Betters tier, uh, the guys on the left there. Thank you so much. Also, big thanks to my uh, Do Gooders tier 
and a big thanks to my doers tier. Thank you very much to all of you. It astonishes me, it really does, that you all hang around. My videos are not as regular as some other channels, but you, you've stuck in there and you've supported me all the way. Thank you very, very much. If you'd like to help support this channel, then uh, the link is below in the info. Thanks so much. Now this bat has no eyes, it has no ears, but what it does have, thanks to this quick little thing I scratch built, is a radar dish. Bats hunt with sonar, right? That's the thing that they do. I'm going to attach this, then I'm going to give the whole thing a, a dousing in a black oil wash. Give it a nice clean up and then uh, we'll have the final shots for you. But in the meantime, remember that thing I said at the very beginning of the video? Well, this is what I was hinting at. Now look at this thing. This was made and sent to me by Rich Evans, AKA Cosmic Constructs, one of my patrons and a good friend of mine. And it is a thing of beauty. Seriously, I can't believe this. Thank you so much, Rich. This is a lovely thing. Cosmic Constructs, search them on Instagram. Make some great things. big thank you to all of you for watching and especially those of you that have made it this far here i am putting in with his friends uh if you're not subscribed consider it if you are subscribed thanks thank you goodbye <laughs>